Welcome back, Rage Nation. Definitely not PR friends. Myself, Pete. He needs to stop, like, fucking getting cute with these picks. John the Mountain Man Stokes. You're not putting them on my models, motherfucker. Chris the non tech Asian. Put the tape measure up and get some wages. You, yeah, no, you really frustrated me. <laughs> you walked away and you came back and your scalp would be thrown across the room. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. I will will share with you my one rage quit story. You know, I'm a robot and I don't have a solo press now eight. This is gonna be a really great opportunity for everybody to see how you effed up. Welcome back, Rage Nation. We got Pete back with another episode, and with the death of Guild Ball, we're gonna put on another Malifo episode. A lot of people are flocking to the Bushido and Marvel Crisis Protocol, but you know. I'm just loving some Malifo, so more content definitely coming that way. And this time, to kind of work through the next faction, we did not leave them for last. I brought on Dave Gilday to bring us, uh, get us some help on how to talk about the guild and all the ins and outs of their faction. So how are you doing today, Dave? I'm doing good, Pete. Thanks for uh, bringing me on. Even though you hit the bottom of the guild barrel, I'm here to try to help. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because... Like we've been doing with all the other factions, this is just something that we want to put together for new players, people new to the faction, to just kind of say like what's interesting, what are some feelings of like how the keyword plays, and that's really kind of what we're getting into this. So if you're looking for a lot of top table tech, that we're not quite there yet. We're we're still still middle mid tables here, right in the wheelhouse. Let's go. Let's talk about the guild. We got the guild, which. Talking about their background first, they're pretty interesting. Well, um, obviously, they're the main part of the story because who would you say the guild is, Dave? And what are they trying to do in the world of Malifo? All right. So the guild is basically the OPEC of magical oil, right? There was a bunch of mages that were all fighting. And then they're like, this is a bad idea. Let's just make it a monopoly. And so they did that as they were running out of soul stones. And then the magical portal to the other realm opened up and they're like, this is sweet. We're all the powerful mages in the world, or at least most of them. And they took over the portal with their guild of mercantilers. And then they started a town, got kicked out, place closed, opened back up, took it over. So they're very, they're all about that power, right? They're all about that money. And they're all about the control of the flow of soul stones and the control of the local governments inside the actual, you know, full world. So they're, they're both the good guys. Some of their keywords are very, like, we're the normal people trying to fight off the monsters of the world, right? The Neverborn and the undead and the wild mages that are burning down your houses, poor people of the world. But they're also the, um, they're also the Inquisition, right? They're also got the elite <laughs> keyword and with their false witnesses. And I've got the quote unquote journalists who don't really do the truth. So it's, it's a mix of control, uh, controlling the common people control in the actual game terminology. And there's a lot of just, um, you know, trying to, trying to keep the common man alive. Yeah. It's definitely a very much the man faction, right? Like yeah. they, they are the one that has the power and everybody else is struggling to get that power and freedom from them. And it's almost like each keyword for the guild is actually like, almost a different department of the guild. It's kind of yep. weird, kind of like you have Homeland Security, but then you also have, you know, the court system. It's it's very interesting. Yeah, it's the special divisions. That's exactly how it is set up. They are, they each, you know, it started off as the Wild Wild West, and then they developed these special divisions. You know, the witch hunters, they take care of the rogue magic users. The marshals take care of the undead, in theory. Yeah, um, the elite are the the judges, but also based, you know, the secret police style folks. So it's uh, so they in theory all each have like a a role, but in the end, it's about you know control for a lot of them. Some of the masters are like good people, right? Like um, the frontier master, the new one, Cornelius Bass. He's like a good dude, right? He's just like trying to make his way, keep people alive. He's he's like a good dude, but some of them like Lucius, not not good dudes yeah yeah i was gonna say i actually like i like the family keywords kind of backstory with the ortegas because they're kind of like on the rim of like the civilization and they're pretty much just protecting from like nephilim protecting from you know the uh the gremlins and just anything else that might just threaten mankind so i, I like their backstory too because the one that i read that was really cool 
was the one where the Nephilim kind of came charging out of the woods and then the Ortegas came out to help protect. I think it might've been the judge, but it was somebody trying to flee from the Nephilim and, and they just sitting there guns blazing horses are getting picked up by the Nephilim and they made it back to the complex safely. Yeah. That's the Ortegas. They're, they're the monster. Well, they're the Nephilim hunters, right? So they, you know, she has an enslaved Nephilim as her totem. Who's, you know, like, so they're not all good, right? In every war game, like everybody is bad. And so, you know, they've enslaved this creature to tell them the secrets of its buddies so they can kill them better. Yeah. So Yeah, pretty good. I mean, is there any specific story or keyword that you're like, man, when I re- read or when I listened to this, you know, background piece, it, it was really kind of awesome to to give you that feel of Malifo. So I like the family I like the family the most, but I guess uh, it's kind of weeby, but I, I like Lady J, right? Like her first um, in the guild book, she, or in the main book, she was, you know, betrayed by McMorning um, or the guild was betrayed by McMorning. Her lover was killed and, you know, she's like seeking vengeance and, you know, she's got kind of a dark history. It's kind of like Vampire Hunter D-ish style where she's got a dark history, but she's using her powers to fight back against the evil. Um, so I, uh, I always enjoy that kind of um, stuff, you know, like it's like it's like liking Dresden, right? It, it's like you want the guy who has the power that's fighting back against the bad things. The yeah. I don't like the guild part where like Lucius is like being in a bureaucratic a hole, right? I don't know if we're supposed to curse, but like I don't like <laughs> that part. That part I'm out on, right? And like I get how it's powerful and effective on table, but I I hate those guys. You know, I came from the Arcanist. Like, I like the idea of like the freedom and searching for things. But like, Ramos is as much as a dick as Lucius is, right? It's just yeah. one has a oh, bigger yeah. mechanism behind him. Yeah, and as far as the whole cursing things go- goes, uh, pretty sure I've heard this podcast's uh, language <laughs> barrier before. Uh, yeah, if you want to hear a good one, uh, you should listen to that death of the life and death of Guild Ball. We definitely Ooh. definitely went off a little bit on those. A little bit sassy that day, were you? Oh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the first keyword, and we'll just kind of just talk about the keyword, see what we like, see what's kind of interesting about it. Uh, we talked about this one already on the Arcanist one, but let's start off with the Augmented. So what do you like about this in the guild? What does it do for you? And what what is old Chuck, Chuck Hoffman going to bring to the fight that you like? A, Chuck is um, one of the hardiest keywords in guild, right? There's only... You'll hear a lot of guild players talk about how very fragile everything in the faction is. And that's just not as true for Hoffman. Now, everyone knows armor is coming when you declare Hoffman, but it's still true. You're coming with a lot of armor. One of the really unique things that guild brings versus um, Arcanist is Fiona Gage, who uh, the guild community is falling in love with because of uh, Russian players in the World Cup's use of her. She's super good. She... Brings a lot of control with her bring it and her ability to suck up hits. And then Hoffman has a lot of healing, has a lot of armor. So when if you can distribute damage, you can't get anything dead. Um, it, so she's an important part of what, how Guild plays it. Um, personally, so is she uh, is she a versatile model? No, she's a journalist model. Her oh. she was a miner, part of the MNSU. Um, and then she got in an accident and I guess Ramos or someone tried to help her by like putting a metal plate on her eye, like, a you know, um, like a mechanical augmentation. Yeah. And then, uh, she kind of was like, what the hell just happened? And she would get these like anger spells because of the mechanism, I guess. And then yeah. they kicked her out. And then Nelly's like, Hey, I'll twist this to my own good. So she's actually a journalist model. She just is really good and provides something like guild, often needs and so is becoming at least right now the flavor of the month guild love and so in especially hoffman she's a mixed construct living model so she gets fast she can be healed she can get her armor she picks up power tokens so all of the um all of the synergies that you've talked about in the arc episode um still exist i, I really like the other model i really like with him is melissa uh, melissa core she's the specifically guild henchman um, and she gets used into other keywords a lot too for me. She's really good because she's pretty independent and her gun is amazing. I'm yeah. a big fan of having at least one gun in general. And I think that's a strength of Guild flat out is that a huge ton of their models have guns. And so 
when you can charge, right? So with Huffin, for instance, you make something fast, you can power transfer to push two inches. So there's a lot of little pushes. So you push two inches, you charge out six inches, you shoot out with your 12 inch gun. That's a 20 inch gun plus a blast if you were to use a power token for it. And then you can just run backwards six inches or read or redeploy 12 inches because you're fast or take two shots and then run away. So it's, it's a good hit and run yeah. piece. It's a good flanker because once you get her some power tokens, she can run around by herself. So for me, those are the two things that I really like. Some of the struggles with Hoffman I have is that I think he gets too much support. Like I think a lot of time people build in tons and tons of support into him. So you have like two working models and a ton of, a ton of support, but some people make that work. I just, um, I'm kind of like Marshawn Lynch over here. Like I'm all about the business. Like I like the models that do the work. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, it, it's interesting because you can, it, the problem with that is if you only bring a handful of models that are actually going to get you your victory points, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And then you're also just, you're, you're forecasting what you're doing throughout the entire turn. So I, I can definitely see how Charles and his crew can like really pump up two or three really, you know, key models but then if you lose one or two of those, the game is pretty much over then. Yeah, exactly. And I I know that I'm not a good enough player to put all my eggs in that basket, right? Because I'll miss yeah. position. I'll underestimate a master I've never seen before. They're going to punk me. I'm going to lose. <laughs> I'm going to lose my peacekeeper and my Joss or, or my um, Howard Langston or whatever it is. The main piece, I'm like, I'm going to get this super bust, busted model. It's going to be the best model in all the world. And then it's dead turn two. And you're like, what? Uh, I got, oh. Yeah, I definitely think that's, I think that's good for any keyword, but especially any ones where they have a lot of support models, you still want a, you know, a handful of them, but you just, you can't put your eggs in all that basket, you know, when you're right. just starting a fact or starting a keyword like this one. Right. Especially as a newbie, I think, um, since this is more newbie focused, it's, it's easy to imagine the supermodel doing everything, but activation order really matters. Um, the other guy has a voice in the game, right? So like the thing you planned in your head often doesn't include the other guy doing something. Yep. Um, and so I think Hoffman falls prey to that or can fall prey to that if not careful. And that's a big thing too, is everything looks good on paper until you get punched in the mouth and then you're like, oh crap, I just lost that model. And, th and then you got to adjust. Right, exactly. That, that, and a good example of that, and this could easily happen to Hoffman's crew, is you know I was playing actually Nephilim the other day, just trying them out, just giving my friend a different look. And uh, with Nephilim, they hit so hard that he was taken aback with like he had so many plans with a handful of models, but the Nephilim just came in and tore it up. And then he's just sitting there like, okay, what do I do now? Yeah, no, I've just got Nephilim everywhere. And, and they just punched me in the face. And accepting out, learning how to accept alphas is an important skill. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things I think uh, Hoffman is actually good at is, you know, he's got a lot of armor, so they can plan for it. But, you know, you can make it impenetrable. You can heal him back up. So there, there is benefit to Hoffman being like, come on and punch me. Yeah, I think that is that Hoffman's one of those crews where I, I would recommend to a new player to start just because he's solid, he's a little forgiving, and you can still do some pretty cool stuff with him. Yeah, and there's a lot of little pushes and movement. Like even, and there's a lot of guns. Um, so like the Hunter or the Peacekeeper, um, one of the Peacekeeper is a versatile model for Guild. And one of the things that I, I find when I'm playing the Peacekeeper and people in the Guild world tend to not think highly of him is his gun is really good. If you can displace the enemy model three to six inches with your dude's gun like yeah he can punch something four or five times like cool like that's awesome i'm not trying to naysay that but it was also cool is being able to shoot something 12 inches away and drag it towards your six right so yeah, there's yeah. a lot of forgiveness that way they just feel like well i need that guy over there and i didn't set up my charges right and my stuff's in the way i shoot three times you know yeah um, that's not the worst that's something that I've definitely learned about playing Malifo is that chip damage is important. Like mm -hmm. if you don't, if you don't think one or two points of damage is going to matter later, you're probably not thinking long-term plans. So right. just something for people to keep in mind that, yeah, you, you do want to kind of plink them down a little bit and then bring them in and finish them off. Yeah. Or plus flips don't always go your way. Right. So you're like, I'm, I've got plus flips and I'm a seven versus their five, you know, stats. So I'm going to hit this and you mess. And yeah. they had the higher card and then you had in your hand and you missed. And you're like, well, I didn't kill that guy. And then having an extra gun is really nice because then you get, you can finish the job, right? You can take care of kind of, you can have another shot at the randomization of cards to try to come swing around back your way to 
finish the thing you need to finish. Anything else with Guild that makes him at least a little different or better than being an Arcanist? Um, the only other thing with um, Guild versus Arcanist, it, the, people often talk about upgrades specifically, um, and Arcanist upgrades are really well thought of, you know, top yeah, uh, first or second uh you know, if you're going to rank the upgrades and guild upgrades are thought of as relatively poor. Um, I would bring out that there, um, that the no prisoners upgrade, I think gives um, some interesting flexibility and movement of some of your big beaters. So you can teleport like a Howard up into eight inches forward up next to something you just shot with a hunter or, you know, something that might carry that. Um, or the on the prowl part of it. So if you're, you know, Melissa or somebody and you shoot a couple things with a blast damage, you suddenly are healing up if you're on the flanks and you're moving, you're pushing an extra two inches and those extra two inch pushes come in big. So I think No Prisoners is kind of the highlight of their um, upgrades versus Arcanist. But, you know, it's, it's I'm not going to say it's better than Arcanist upgrades because that would be <laughs> a lie. Yeah, that would be a lie. As Mari Povich says, did <laughs> Dave said that the guild upgrades were better than Arcanist? That was a lie. Lies. Not the one thing. I, one thing I do want to ask you though is last thing before we move on to the next one is the the new Hoffman box is coming out and it has three of those stupid metal cats. Mm -hmm. Do you ever foresee yourself bringing three of those? Um, I you'd They're have like to points. you'd They're have to construct a pretty specific pool. I think they are better than a lot of like people get stuck on the big 10 stone models for Hoffman. I think, you know, cause it's like, Oh, peacekeeper. It's the best peacekeeper ever. It's fast. And it's got all the suits it ever wanted. It's great. But sometimes you need to spread out. Right. That's and, good. um, a hunter with three power tokens, turn one, that's gen speed six and deadly pursuiting and pouncing and dragging stuff off points. Um, can be really good. Now, three of them, eh, like, I like okay, two. I could see two, but three that's 24 stones. Yeah, it's a lot of stones. I mean, it would have to be some very specific pool that I can't think of in GG1, maybe GG2. That's one of the benefits of Malfo is that as the schemes of stretch change, different models gain value. That's true. So, um, you know, maybe someday they, in the future, but not today. They might be planning ahead of us. All right. So, the next keyword that we're going to look at is Mr. Cornelius Bass of the Frontier. So, I've only played against this like once and there were birds everywhere. So I felt like, you know, an Ar Alfred Hitchcock movie. Um, that's interesting because I've never, ever seen a bird on the table <laughs> on in the Malvo. I think so. Bass is a case of only half of his keyword is out and he's pretty polarizing. I mean, I, I would say straight up for those newbies, be careful since it's a newbie focused podcast. Um, be careful of taking too much of the online presence you know the social media of the guild to heart there's a lot of bifurcation and um opinions about things so there's people on the guild chat that like frontier is the best and i love it and there's people on the guild chat that like it's the worst and this keyword's terrible or like clockwork traps you need eight of them and other people like well that would never work um so yeah. just be careful about taking everything as gospel yeah and i think that's that's good for a lot of keywords because and that's the one things I like about Malifaux, though, is there are some people that they can make a model work and they really love it. And then you get somebody else and they're like, dude, I don't even know how you make that model work. So, right. Um, yeah, that happens a lot. I, I, I personally like the four and five stone middle, four, five, six stone models in, in Guild. Um, but they are generally thought poorly of because they're squishy. But you can preserve them by just not moving them. Particularly the pistol arrows are a favorite of mine that get yeah. a lot of flack on various places. Cause they just die. I mean, they're four wounds with no defenses. If you let them get shot or attacked, they will die. That's true. But um, yeah. you know, they're three AP for a four star model, but um, for frontier, one of the things to remember is that it's only half out, right? Cause the explorers part isn't out yet. Yeah. Um, the other thing um, that I really like about um, pass is the Pathfinder finds its way into a lot of stuff. The Pathfinder has the ability to summon traps. It has extra movement shenanigans for other models, which is always um, good and necessary. Actually, that's one of the things that I would bring it's up about. concealment, too. Get a lot of concealment. Um, you can get cover out of just concealment or being near a building. One of the trap things that is about the crew is the home on the range. So that makes... If you do that and like wedge your flank, you're just going to get murdered like turn one, right? Or 
you don't move, it doesn't matter. But in like corner, maybe it matters more, right? Like some of the more distant deployments, one of the things that you have to remember is that deployments matter and like terrain matters. So they're one of the two or three or two keywords that have a fair amount of, they're all unimpeded. They're not unimpeded, but they ignore severe terrain. Yeah. So that can matter on a lot of boards, especially as we're playing Basel games more recently, right? That's a bigger thing. Bass himself is a beast, right? He's got a three, four, five shotgun. He's got a pretty boss defensive trigger. So you're only going to get one attack for a lot of things. He's a pretty, pretty baller dude. His other, his other, um, attack action caught in the quicksand has a lot of like jank to it. So if you have like a peacekeeper or like a brutal emissary or something on one side of the forest, he can use that on the brutal emissary peacekeeper and it magically teleports however many inches to the other side of the forest. Yeah. Bass himself is good. The Ostringer is good holder of like Vendetta. So that's like a scheme specific guy, right? Cause he has the only gun in the game that I'm aware of that is ignores line of sight, concealment, cover, and um, in combat. That's pretty good. Um, you know, it's 14 inches. So he can do that. So there's a, there's a lot of like I don't know potential there, and some people are starting to unlock it, but there's definitely uh, some room for growth in his keyword to have a couple more options. That's kind of how I felt when I was playing against it, and the guy that has it in our meta, he's kind of newer, so it it's a lot of oh cool I can do this or oh cool I can do that. So it you're right. I think that until we see the other stuff that comes out with it, we can't fully evaluate it, and I think that's one thing. If you're getting into Guild or the Explorers, that's kind of exciting to be a part of. But mm-hmm. that just also means, like, you played a lot of War Machine too, Dave, and you know mm-hmm. that there was a lot of times where there was a cool toy and it didn't have a model yet. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's coming. The other thing that I think that they're good for in today's packet and GG1's packet is I think they might be pretty solid at Recover Evidence. I still need to test some more, but um, they have two different models with Bring It. Um, which is the same thing that Ironsides has from the yeah. Arkham side, right? So just walk movement plus two um, and take a swing. But, you know, grabbing out that model that has uh, an evidence token that you want over on your team so they can murder it and then pick it up without having to fight all of their guys. Yep. And that's pretty big. Or, you know, there's a guy with a, lo- or a lodestone and ley lines standing next to, you know, their, their pylon. All of a sudden, baby bass is yelling at him, challenging him to a duel and they're walking away from it, you know, and their master's yelling. I'm like, get back there, you schmuck. <laughs> you know, so like there's, there's uses, there's stuff there. I, you know, I, I found some good things, but I've also, I find that the traps have a lot of counters. Like you're like, you get excited about these traps. You're like, oh, I'm going to control the ever living crap out of this guy. There's going to be like eight traps. They're all going to like swarm them, like chomper chews on them and grab their ankles and hamstring them. And then they just all die. Or the other team has terror and they can't pass willpower jacks. You know, there's just a lot of stuff. So I think that's your first blush. Look at them. Isn't actually the way they need to play often. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. So this is one that I actually feel like a decent amount of people like playing in the guild, and that's Dashiell Barker's crew with the guard. So this one's kind of interesting because it's a pseudo summoning kind of list, right? Oh, it's 100% a summoner. He's the guild primary summoner, and people love him. Like Ever since this GG1 changes, people are like in love with Dashiell Barker. Which is funny because he's an ugly rock of a man, right? So, well, dude, even the, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just I can't take the executioner like seriously. Oh, you mean it, like the one that looks like he's dancing from a Mel Brooks movie? Yeah, it looks like he's some kind of you know tur- turbo nerd that got a hold of some you know Freddy Krueger claws <laughs> and is like the happiest nerd ever. Well, I mean, he is a pretty happy nerd. Um, <laughs> yeah, guard. I played them three times on Saturday and. I was thinking about my rage quit stories and I rage quit on this dude on Saturday night and I felt pretty bad because he was a super nice, lovely guy and he was probably excited to play, but I'd played three times that day with a new summoner that I never played. And I was just, my brain was toast, toasty McToasterson. So, so what made you, uh, what made you rage quit that game there? Um, well, I was playing, <laughs> so I did a bunch of dumb stuff and then by the like fourth activation of turn two. So he was playing Oni, another summoner for 10 mm-hmm. thunders. And I was playing Dashiell, and I was playing a lot of support with Dashiell, and I was basically trying to play them, play them like Oni. So I was like, I'm going to make this giant turbo nerd of an executioner who's going to like murder the world. You have like 23 focus and fast. I mean, like three focus and fast, mm-hmm. right? It's going to be great. Like that took too much time because he was about to throw the Obsidian Oni 
a bomb into my face, which is one of the tricks that Oni has. So it's playing like this cheap, like, you know, Walmart brand Oni style list. that was just worse than his actual Oni. Yeah. Like, this is like, this isn't going to work. And he just like Fuhatsu shot off my execution in like a single turn. And just like, uh, and I was just like, this is dumb. And then I'm like, all right, well, the only other survival model, so actual guard models, is the actual boss. Barker, Dashiell Barker, is a pretty survival dude. And I'm like, oh, yeah. all right, I'm going to I'm gonna charge him in there to hold up this Oni so it doesn't blow up this bubble that I've made. So I charge him in there. And then, like, he's doing okay. He gets to get attacked by a lot. It turned out his hand was really good, juiced, so he could summon well and attack me well. And I... uh and so I'm like down to five wounds. I'm like, oh, it's okay. I've got a lot of healing in this crew. It'll turn out fine. And then he had a Jorogumo, which was like, no, still no. You're not allowed to heal. That's my bonus action. <laughs> suck it. Um, suck and then, nerd. Yeah, suck a nerd. Get fucked, nerd. And uh, and then he was like, oh, by the way, not only did I land that with the 12 I had, I also had this pocket 13 for a second Jorogumo. And I was just like, and mm. we're done. We're just done. Mm. Like you ate my executioner. You ate my master or you were about to eat my master. I can't summon. You're playing a summoner. Like, I like. I just. I was done. I was just done. I was like, I, I'm going to get a good day, sir. <laughs> I'm just going to get angrier for two hours. Like, I play this stupidly. I understand your stuff's not actually broken. Like, there's people that beat it all the time. You know, like it's a strong keyword, but it's not broken. Yeah. My stuff is also good. I just I played this stupidly. I did some dumb stuff both in um, creation, list creation, and in play. And I'm just like, I don't. We don't need to. Sh- prove this is a six three instead of an eight two you know like i don't like i don't want to be angry for two hours so we're just how so, about we're just done <laughs> so i've definitely been because trust me there's been a couple of malifo games where i'm like turn two or three it's like all right you already got this you just want to like and if it's in person you're just like do you want to play another like you want to rack up again yeah. but you know, obviously on Basel, I'd be like, yeah, we're, we're done here. But right. and it was part of a league. So like he need we need the score. But um yeah, it was my rage. That was my most recent rage quest story, and I thought I was pretty <laughs> proud. Yeah, I was like, no, like I'm just gonna like, it's fine. There's no reason for everyone to get angry and like shout. Yeah. You know, like that's like not at him. You know, Andrew was a lovely dude. He was perfectly nice human. Wasn't my opponent. It was just like, you know, when you get raged out, when you tilt oh, off yeah. the face of the earth, it's, oh, yeah. it doesn't make sense. It just it does. <laughs> so looking at him being a summoner, obviously there are different types of summoners. So mm-hmm. when he when Dashiell brings out these guard models, what is he trying to do with his his minions and everything? Right. So Dashiell, uh, so part of the guard or the guild sadness, right, is that like guard is one of the only groups that like brings out slow models um, when they summon. And they have the lowest summoning stat at six. And you have to summon off of a enemy scheme marker or the TN goes up by two. So there's like a lot of, a lot of, tax. of ta- yeah, right. There's a lot of taxes. And so you're bringing like the guild steward, who's a versatile model that people love in general to like get rid of the condition of slow on your model. And they upgraded the dispatcher, which is his totem to be a scheme marker and give him to be an enemy scheme marker and give him some card draw. So it's, it's this very synergistic um, crew that you can, you can do a bunch of things with, and I'm not a good guard player. Like I'm just learning guard. So I, I don't want to act like I, you know, am God's gift to guard, but it, he does a couple things. He can make executioners, which is a nine stone beater. Um, so despite looking like a turbo nerd, they actually are pretty badass as far as oh, yeah, they, can, they can be nasty. Go. And you can summon them, right? So that's a nine stone beater that just shows up out of nowhere. They can get fast. They can push four inches. That can be a ride with me from their eight stone model that he can summon the mounted guard. Um, They can get a free bonus action if the dispatcher is near them, or there's a lot of making your guys drop enemy scheme markers. So, right, maybe I shoot you with dash, make you drop a scheme marker, have summoned an executioner that's going to travel 25 inches and have four attacks when he gets to you with like yeah. three focus, right? Like there's like this magical Christmas land of like super beater that can show up. The executioner likes lead line coat a lot, which is one of the upgrades of the guild that is pretty, pretty good. And like it's the one that's probably taken the most it's armor one laugh off, which is a great ability. Yeah, laugh um, off is Fantastic. Uh, and then shielded. If you don't move shielded too. So, you know, I deliver this executioner late in a turn. He survives. He has hard to kill. Now he has 
um, armor, and next turn he's getting shielded too. He's got Juggernaut so he can heal. There's some other healing in the crew or through a steward. So this big beater is going to just show up and murder you. The other thing Guard has, it's really fast. They have the mounted guard, so that's an unimpeded speed 7 model to start that can ride with me. Yep. Um, when you kill it, it turns you just murdered the horse, and the guy on top is still a guardsman. They have... Um, they have some armor guys with some slow who also play in augmented. They have little dudes, little dogs, and and little guardsmen that can run around. So they, they have a lot of speed. Um, they have a couple models that have some staying power. Most of them are paper. Most of them are just guys, right? So it's guild. Most of them are just normal humans trying to fight off the monsters. Um, <laughs> Which so doesn't just, always work out. No. It's not like, you know, I'm a little metal man with lots of armor. No, it's like, I'm a guy that got taught how to shoot a a normal gun. I signed up on Tuesday and here I am. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I'm a four stone dude. I please don't murder me, Mr. Giant Devil Man <laughs> with a sword. Um <laughs> you know, so they have a lot of speed, they have a couple badass beaters. Um Dashel himself is pretty is a pretty good brawler. He's got armor and laugh off built in. He's got a two four five axe. He's he's getting in there and doing some more rumbling than a lot of a lot of other summoners can do so it's a mix of a lot of speed a little bit of survivability if you tech forward in, in, in places but not not very much i would not say they're survival um and a lot of brawling their riflemen are really good that's a really it's the sniper model they can shoot you from 24 inches away it produces a lot of focus so it's it's got a lot of offense it's got a lot of speed uh, that's mostly it that, that's what yeah, the guard it, it kind for. of it kind of reminds me of like some kind of you know, general or some kind of officer who's, you know, summoning up these guys and then he's kind of throwing them into the fray, you know, barking orders and just throwing them into the, you know, into the melee. And, and some of them, it's not going to turn out good, but he just keeps throwing them in at him. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's my, that or counter punching, I think is the, is the way the guard should play. So it's either running around on the flanks with these quick horsemen, dragging along dudes with, you know, fire raining down the field. Or they set up a fire base, someone get you know, the other team gets tired and tries to charge into them, and then you have executioners for counter punch. Yep. Um, so but yeah, it's his uh his quick action is foul mouth motivation, same thing as the steward. So it's literally this dude just like it, it's the you know, it's Patton yelling at his troops in the most uh exciting way possible that literally heals them and gives them focus because he's cursing at them. The next keyword that we're gonna talk about is one that I haven't seen on the table, but I'm going to tell you, I love these models a lot. And that's the Marshall keyword with Lady J. So yeah, this is, this seems like a cool keyword. Yeah. Marshall is pretty dope. Like it's some of the most iconic models, right? Like people talk about like Teddy out of Neverborn, but the, the death marshals, like the guys with the coffins, like, and they're leaping over them with their like dope, uh, Western hats, like with their peace bringers, oh, yeah. right? They look really cool. Very iconic. Um, Marshall is a great keyword. Marshall Marshall has a pretty low floor, skill floor. So if you're starting out, I would recommend, one of my recommended crews is Marshall. They have good, they have a lot of good um, minions. They've got a lot of good options. Lady J herself is is pretty boss. I mean, she's a, you know, she's, she's a weeb dream, right? She's like a lady in a great coat with a sword jumping around and blind. <laughs> um, but they have... A lot of healing. They actually have some defenses. Basically, everything in the keyword has hard to wound because they've stolen all that resurrectionist uh, energy. Right? They're using yeah. necromancy. Um, they're pretty quick. They've got they've got a horseman who's who's really awesome. They've got um, Lady J, who's the only model in guild with leap, which is a great ability. Yeah, I mean she has crit strike on her sword too, and you know min four damage is nothing to sneeze at, right? Um, and she can like. She can get an attack off of her leap. She's got a great sword, so she can get plus flips if she's not charging. Her, she's the only model in the game that has mass condition removal with her tactical action. So that's amazing versus, you know, Karis or McMorning or, I don't know, stuff that, like, wants to mass slow you, like Rasputina or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, um, that can be really good. She also, her crew also has a lot of injured stacking. It, you don't think about the math. I guess when you're starting, you don't think about the map, but like dropping their defense and willpower by two, like really changes the card map yeah, on what you're deal. getting done. You know, huge deal, huge. And so she has like, she has a gun, but it's not a gun, right? So she can shoot into melee or you like, you butterfly jump away and suddenly she can finish the job. 
uh, like I was trying to kill Sparks LeBlanc out of Foundry the other day, and I chopped yep. it with my sword, and I cheated in to get it. And he's like, see a sucker? And he ran away, and I'm like, well, I just use my necromantic mental energy, and I try to kill you again. And he's like, wait, wait, she has a gun? I'm like, yeah, she does. She's she's amazing. She, she herself is really good. The Judge is one of the best beater models in the game. He's slow, or she's slow. But he hits with the enchanted katana. She hits real hard at three, four, six. So her model hits stuff. Hits hard. It's pretty survivable. It's got a lot of options. I'm a big like I like Marshall a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it just it. I think that any um, any crew that has like a very direct purpose and it's all spelled out pretty much on the cards. It just does it in a specific way in different ways. Is definitely a great faction for people that are just getting into the game or just getting into a crew, this is a really good one to kind of cut your teeth on the game and figure things out. Yeah, I definitely agree. And um, as my local metal will tell you, I hate Obey. Like, I started the game mostly with Marcus. Obey is terrible for Marcus. Like, really bad, unless you know what's happening and plan for it. It's horrendous. And they have a model with a suited Obey um, in the jury. And they have the Domador who has a suited obey for undead. Um, so they, they have sources of obey. And I mean, if you're just starting obey, it won't mean anything to you. But like, believe me, it is one of the most flexible, if not the most flexible rule in the game. And it is amazing. So they also have obeys, which is. Well, well Dave, I am playing Zoraida for the first time on Thursday. So I'm going to be obeying. Person. I'm going to be obeying the crap out of it. <laughs> it's really good man when you live the dream oh it's so bad right i uh so a different war story i this new guy first was beginning to play played a couple of henchmen hardcore he's like his first full game he's playing big hat which is you know a tall order for uh someone new oh, yeah. he's a veteran war gamer but it's still tall tall order i'm playing marcus and i didn't realize that whatever the guys that obey in big hat could the obey other stuff i thought it was only small stuff that they could obey but it's not they just get the suit baked in when it's a lesser cost yep so they can do it to you yeah and he's carrying around a 13 a mask and so he summons this dude and then busts out his 13 a mask to obey my cerberus who then like had like a focus and two or three upgrades and was like preparing to go eat summer and he's like oh he's going to charge that guy and use all his upgrades and his onslaughts and his focus and like that's <laughs> you like <laughs> You ate like, I don't know, eight points of my guy, like my eight point model and wasted six of my AP or something <laughs> like it was so bad. <laughs> Let this guy live the dream. I walked right into it. And it was... you too can do that if you play the Marshall keyword. <laughs> yeah, and you can. That can be you. I My, <laughs> my enslaved Nephilim obeyed a spider swarm the other day. It was awesome. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was great. But obey. It's a great rule. <laughs> yeah. Or terror. Depends on which side of it you're on, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, so let, let's go into another dual faction master. And this one, I don't know. If you're new, if you're new to the to uh, the game, I don't know if you play Lucius no. right away. D- he, yeah. he, the elite <laughs> keyword and mimic keyword just, it, it seems like there's a lot going on. Yeah, I... I have not played elite. I've not played with elite personally, but I'm in a meta with Jesse who's achieved internet fame with guild. And, uh, so Lucius is one of his babies and I've gotten raffle stomp by Lucius's machine. The first two games I ever played was against a Lucius player. It feels ridiculous. They will take 83 actions. And like that was my first AP. Like wait, what, what, what that guy obeyed that guy who did something to this guy. And now that guy's attacking me. Like it's, and then you draw a card and then you draw a card and I lose a card and I might be injured and I'm staggered. And like, what, what, <laughs> what is going on? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, Lucius is very complicated. Uh, his power in this particular season is um, under a lot of uh, debate, I guess. His keyword models, like lawyers are really good. They're they are considered very good. Uh, if one of his key models, which I'll bring out, they they cycle cards, or they clean your hand. So they have a rule called tools, tools for, of the trade, and they um, pick up the top card of your discard deck and put down a card out of your hand, and then get the suit of the card that they put out of their hand. Yeah. So, you know, you just flipped a red joker on that defense that you wanted. Cool. Like, pick up that red joker so I can use it again. Put down this one of masks. All of a sudden, I've got masks so I can get my obeys, another obey model, and I've got two uses out of my red joker. 
they're a really good model. They do a lot of stuff, but they're they're a support model. They do a lot of indirect things. Not not a good starting model, but something to start looking at. That's that's one of my like how far up you are you up the skill ladder kind of um, as you're growing as a player, do you understand obeys? Do you understand why the lawyer, guild lawyer is good? Once you achieve that, your your skill has, you know, you can consider you, yourself like you leveled up. Being, level up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think that when we were talking about Lady J and how, you know, she has a direct path, Lucius does not have a direct path. He is, you have to figure out how you're going to use all of this manipulation to achieve the goal of scoring points. And if you're just doing all this random nonsense, you're not scoring any points. Yeah. Yeah. You can get really caught in the machine. Um, And I think that's one of the problems I've seen with a couple of guild players that I've played against is that they get caught in the machine of what they're doing. Like, Oh, but look at all this stuff I just did. And like, but nothing happened. Black box. I'm drawing so many cards. Right. Yeah. Black box. What you did, you, you put in an AP, you put in a Lucius AP as the input and the output was what? zero points <laughs> like you know what i mean people get really caught up in the um doing things for the sake of doing things with elite so i'd caution especially newer players don't get caught up in the the game is won by scoring points i mean if you if you find it fun just to do like the super one activation turn thing because that's good for you then cool go for the gold you know make have fun but if you're looking for um strength and power in, in winning the game then you just be careful not getting caught in the in what i think of as the black box of like n- when you get nothing out you have to you have to put the action in and the cards in and get useful scoring out and elite doesn't do that clearly yeah so the one thing i was going to ask kind of moving forward because the, the <laughs> if you want to know more about this keyword definitely go listen to what you were talking about with the uh elite and mimic keyword for uh for third floor wars they did a great deep dive on it but the main thing i wanted to ask you with agent 46 do you have any experiences with him or what are your thoughts on him yeah uh, he, did, um, he did get an errata he did he did and that was a very needed errata just to open up design space to use a war war machine word warhammer word or a uh, warm horse word but um he is he is like the epitome of this getting caught in the black box, right? I think he has a lot of interesting uses, primarily ruthless. Um, so if you, you know you hitting Jackdaw, or if you're hitting um, Jackdaw is the primary terror master, but if you're hitting something that has a lot of terror or manipulative, ruthless comes in big. Um, but I think a lot of people get caught up in like, oh, I can make this guy have so many unavoidable attacks, and you're like, just slow your roll. Um, he is good. He brings a lot of flexibility to the crew, kind of like Miranda does for Marcus. Um, you know, he's just because you can copy out different weapons that brings some variability. But yeah. he's not like, you know, the be all end all, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I think people were just because you can't cheat against his attacks. So I think people get in their head that, you know, this is going to be amazing and I'm going to do so much damage with them and they're not going to be able to cheat. But that might be just one of his attacks and then maybe you miss it still. Right. You still have to hit the attacks. And now, you know, if you're doing that, um, you can't both mimic someone else's attack and get the no cheat, which is what they changed about him. But he still has a two, four, five crit strike or execute. Yeah, because it says this model's attack actions. Yeah. That was the big change they made is they wouldn't allow you to steal other people's actions and not let them, not let you cheat against them. But his, his own, his individual attacks are still pretty good, right? Like execute is one of those things that individually isn't great because people have stones or cards, but against Lucius, he's draining when you're <laughs> using him. Well, he drains the hell out of your hand yeah. and then, and then execute becomes dangerous. Right. Um, when Terrifying. you have, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, um, so then execute comes more into play for his crew, a two, four, five with crit strike that you can't cheat against still pretty good. You know, suddenly that's three, five, six, no cheats, or, you know, I've got a decent Lucius has a lot of card draw when used correctly. So, you know, maybe I've got a high Ram, he's a henchman. So I stone it. Now I'm hitting you for, uh, uh, four, you know, a four, six, seven, and you can't cheat against the attack. Right. Like that's, that's the fear of him. Is that worth all the effort? Eh, he has stealth. He has ruthless. You know, he, he can still draw you cards. Like I think there's uses. He's just not, he's just not the magical Christmas land guy. People want him to be when they first read that rule. Yeah. Rule. Does that make sense? 
Oh yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, there's so the cool thing is because I'm playing. I got a bunch of uh, Neverborn stuff, and actually he his crew came with the Neverborn stuff. Mm-hmm. So I started looking at him, and I'm really excited to start kind of messing with it. But he's definitely one of those masters where I feel like you got to have at least like ten games in just to figure out what it does and how you get points off of it. Yeah, and he has a lot of um, movement shenanigans, right? So he's pretty paper, right? Um, once again, the theme of guild, the the best defense in guild is is placement, which is one of my big themes for guild as I've been picking them up and learning and trying to become a better player is focusing on the basics, right? So they don't have a lot of armor or hard to wound or hard to kill or... Um, you know, a bunch of whatever other defensive abilities you want to list, right? They don't have a lot of that in a lot of their keywords. So the only way they stay safe is being in the right place, you know, you know, using terrain. Um, I and basically I prefer, draining your resources. Yeah. Draining your resources. Well, I've got better cards than you, which is both what the elite does and journalist does. Like I, that's one of the reasons I like four and five stone models is because now you have to spread out attacks, right? So you, you don't, you can't like charge my single eight stone model and kill them in two attacks. Now you have to get two different places to kill the two four stone models. Um, but it's a very fundamentals driven faction. And Lucius is one of those things, right? Like hand control, um, activation control, positioning, all important. Otherwise you just fold, right? You just, yeah. if you, if you get something into you that is dangerous, you know, your lawyers are dying, your investigators are dying, agent 46 is dying. He only has stealth, you know, stuff dies. Yeah. And the next crew we're going to go into, you, you mentioned kind of does similar things. And I'm, I'm curious to kind of hear about it because I mean, when I see this crew, I just think the newsies and yeah. I don't, I don't know what the hell they do. So <laughs> we have the journalist crew with Nelly. So, I mean, what is this, uh, yeah. What does this writer and, and wannabe journalist do? Uh, so Nelly, if you ever read or listen to a uh, breachside broadcast of Nelly stories, she plays exactly like her stories do. They annoy the ever living fuck out of you. Like, <laughs> you, you know, like, like if this person existed in your world, you'd want to throttle her. Um, and she does that on the table, right? She, she puts up her aura that makes, as soon as you get distracted, you get slow. She's going to stun you. She's going to drain your cards. She actually does a pretty good amount of damage once you get the machine rolling. She's pretty survivable. She has a good defensive trigger. That lets her move out of combat. Yeah, so, squeal, you know, squeal's good. Squeal's good. Um, and it's built in, right? So, like, yeah, you can work around it, but that's something that people have to work around with stunned and, you know, b- no defense triggers, like with an executioner claw or, yeah. or whatever. They have to work around it. And then you bring some leadline coat, maybe, or she heals every time she interacts. Um, so, she, her job is to be the most annoying creature in the face of the earth and a good nelly it's another skill challenge right so a good nelly versus a bad nelly is night and day a good nelly is terrifying it's um you won't have a hand everything will be stunned she does a fair amount of damage she the first thing everyone sees is like so a guy in our north carolina chat brought this up the other day and he's he's new he's like i don't get it this interact action so one of her things is um a bunch of her models have it is Headline secrets exposed. So enemy only target must take the interact action, even if engaged. And someone's like, well, you can take the interact action and choose to pick up all markers around you, which right, you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to get all my all my ski markers that I ever wanted this way. And who control, you know, it's just like it doesn't work the way you first imagine that ability yeah. will work. But you layer that with all of, most of her models have. Within eight inches, they'll gain a focus and draw a card if you interact. So so I whatever my main part of my attack did, then I get to draw a card and interact. If there's a lawyer near you, you're discarding a card. If you're trying to scheme, like the guy walked five, your model walked five and schemed to get the scheme where he wanted to, now his options are drop another scheme or pick up the schemes that he doesn't want. Right. So it's annoying. It, she's got a lot of card draw. She'll have a lot of focus. Um, she actually puts out a fair amount of damage in kind of like sneaky ways. Um, she puts out a lot of conditions. Um, she, she just, she's just annoying and it doesn't work. It's one of those things that builds synergy, a good use of her build synergy in a very natural way. Right. So like, Unlike the way I played guard the other day or bad Lucius players play him, the synergy isn't forced, 
right? So you can get into the black box, for, black box forcing, you know, forcing these like super combos that you've got to imagine in your head. Her keyword individually going, oh, that's not that good, but okay. So now I've drawn four cards. Six of my models now have three focus and you have no hand, right? All sound, now that's really good, right? But yeah. individually, they're like, oh, what does that do? That's nothing. So she's she's another skill check master or uh, master. She's she's annoying. She's a control master with a pretty fair amount of damage, um, and she's definitely a, a skill check. Yeah, one thing I will say is when I look at her crew, like the models do not look interesting to me at all until I get to the undercover reporter, and then I'm like, okay, that's hilarious, <laughs> right? Right, a dude hiding in a barrel. Yeah, the undercover reporter gets used a lot too. So I'll, I'll raise that as one of the like models that will be brought up a lot especially as new players like wait what else like i have marshall what else do i need to like look into undercover reporter is one of the things that you want to think about getting he gets purchased out a keyword a lot he starts buried he can make your own guys interact while he's buried he sends one of the other guys minions back to the starting line which can be huge right so someone's breakthrough is not a a scheme or someone's trying to score sabotage with their minion uh, they get down the first marker like, yes, I got this. All your dudes are up there in the front. And you're like, no, no, no. Back to the start. Me, you know, me bucko. And then that's fine. Um, he does a lot the of stuff. thing with him too is, I mean, at the end phase, he's getting to push for. Yep. And then if you look at his bonus action, you can just get rid of a scheme that probably is around. Right. And you can just be like, all right, I'm going to move six and then I'm going to go do the thing I need to do. Exactly. And there's no flip on his uh, tactical action. So you're not burning cards or black jokering that important flip. He's got arson, yeah. which comes up, just eat other people's scheme markers. Um, Undercover reporter gets brought up a lot, both in keyword and out of keyword. He's one of the kind of one of the all-stars to think about. So that's one of those boxes to uh, to just pick up just because it's good. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely going to see action as you you know start branching out of whatever your initial chosen keyword is. Okay, and I just got to ask before we move on, what the hell is this printing press to? It's just like, that's it, such a lame totem. It's just like, what is she doing with it? Oh, poor printing press. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's pretty funny. The little spider printing press is just like, like walking along. It feels almost like Harry Potter-ish, like yeah. just like printing out stuff. Um, so things that the printing press does, uh, one, Arcane Reservoir huge right so people talk about um the arcanist upgrades all the time like we were talking about and they bring magical training simply for arcane reservoir you get it as a totem it's pretty good Um, uh, exactly two um incidental damage if the model ends its activation within two of this model the model suffers one damage that's also front of card ability now remember nelly's making you slow and distracted and stunned so killing the armor two guy uh or getting away from it with your single action because you're slow it's getting harder right so now i'm chipping in some damage i'm being annoying and in your way um he also the other big thing he has is you can use hot off the presses as his attack action to give something burning two and then push the target four inches that doesn't have to be an enemy so Oh, that's um, kind of cool. my guy gets burning two and pushes four inches can be plenty fine in a lot of situations oh yeah um, you can heal him so he comes back. The other big thing is that uh, he's got more headline exposed, which um, one of Nelly's things, and Allison Dade, which is her, one of her henchmen, is I, when I then two, I can control your interaction. So suddenly you're not making your choices. Now you're interacting for me. So I'm getting kind of free AP. Um, he can become a three, uh, a three, four, five damage dealer because you gain one down. Da- it's an extra one damage when you're within next to a, a marker and remember my hand is juiced your hand is not so <laughs> um that's all coming through bigger and then synergy right so all the stuff that nelly wants to do with her extra extra auras and extra uses are coming in big with him just being engaged so one of her abilities gets much beefier if if the target is engaged, so her one more question, if the target is engaging any models, it suffers one, three, four damage. So your spider your spider press runs up, stands next to the guy, maybe hits him for three. Now she's just like asking the guy annoying questions as your little spider is doing a dance next to him. And suddenly you're doing one, three, four damage, plus one 
you know, with slander on her things. So now it's two, four, five. She's starting to do some damage. You're slow. It's against willpower. She's got used hand and focused. So it's it's a build piece. It's doing it's by itself. It's like eh, whatever. But when you build the interactions, it gets to be doing doing some stuff. All right. Well, I guess next time. Well, next time. First time I see that keyword, I'm gonna not scoff at the printer because it's me, I guess. Yeah, it's. It, you're like what? Whatever. It's two, three, four, and two, three, four is a pretty basic stat line, right? But it, it's not just two, three, four, yeah, right? On, it, on, it's, a, on a totem, that's decent, though. Yeah, right. In armor two and, and four wounds, it can heal itself. You know, doing some extra damage just by standing around, that's fine. All right. Well, moving on, we got the Ortegas with the family keyword, and aesthetically and thematically, this one is one of the good ones, but. I'll definitely say, like, seeing Guild played here and there, I feel like they don't get a ton of play. So so how do they operate? All right, so family is, like, the, the keyword that I started with, right? Like, that was, like, Guild. Like, what has flavor? What's interesting? Family. Um, so this is my opinion. Uh, I think they're what their plan is is to win through AP, win through more AP, right? So their two keyword abilities are... Um, when you concentrate, you get to push four inches towards an enemy, and you can discard a card to let any family member with a lower cost than you take an action. So, um, all of a sudden, your nine stone henchman beater is getting another uh, stat seven attack from discarding a two, right? And he's focused because. There's a lot of way to generate focus. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're like Perdita herself gets plus flips if you're healthy. So she's great at deleting scheme runners, right? So like you, the way I think of them, and maybe this will be proven to not be true as things go on, but she is great at like, I'm going to win the AP battle because I'm going to murder your six and seven stone guys in like a shot, turn one or turn two. I'm going to then ride my AP efficiency through Aporel to winning this fight, right? So like she, it's pretty, it's flimsy keyword, right? Things will die. They don't have a lot of defenses or any. Um, yeah. They they win through AP efficiency, right? So I'm going to win. I'm going to kill your stuff pretty damn quick. Um, my stuff will fold pretty quick as well. So I'm hoping to kill your stuff enough of your stuff before you can eat my big boys and my little guys will hopefully be good enough at scheming and having enough AP. They well, are good at scheming. They're not like good schemers. They say, have a lot of AP. The thing that I find kind of, and it's kind of, the, I think the reason why they struggle sometimes is because there's a couple problems with that key word, right? Is when you look at Aporel, it's, you have to activate with somebody one, you have to be within six mm -hmm. and then two, it has to be a lower cost. So, I think it'd be different if it was just, hey, just do a model right after this one. Yeah. Because there's two requirements there that you have to meet. And if you don't, then you can't do it. And there's just some times where it's like, I have to activate this model. So it, it, there's just some times where you're not going to get it because you have to activate and respond. Right. And you only have so many cards, right? Uh, it yep. is... So earlier, I think in this, I've certainly said it in other places, but I think I said it earlier in this podcast, is that Guild is a fundamentals faction family is a fundamentals keyword the reason why is you need to plan ahead a little bit you need to have a uh, card management for your hand you need to assess threats and kill the right things correctly um, you need to position correct because all of their movement stuff was pushes in general um, like the enslaved nephilim scares something and pushes it um uh, grandma in a wheelchair can actually yell at you so and has good. like a pseudo obey. Um, so she can get people to do things like Nino is a really key piece in my view. He ignores the six inch part of that, um, of the Aporel and the, yeah. um, and the family values, which is a trigger on a lot of their attacks. And he has a built in the family values, so he can force Perditi. He's the only, only uh, one of a couple models that can make Perditi to focus which is super handy because using your model, your master's AP to actually concentrate sucks. Yep. You do it when you got to, but you much rather her show up before her activation with three focus. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So it, it is strong. It's a strong keyword in my experience. It just, 
you can't play it. You cannot play it like Hoffman. It just won't work. And if you just rely on, I'm going to stand out in the open and shoot everything before you get to me and I will kill you all. Your opponent has way too much um, voice in that and can use terrain or, you know, they know that's coming. So they bring the captain or a snowstorm or something in Arcanists, right? They bring stuff that stops that plan. You, you need a secondary plan. And yeah. I think family really rewards learning the the parts of the game that matter right ap efficient like ap is the master of this game right like it's and they are an ap keyword they operel and bravado are, are great ap syncs right and so like yeah you have to be lesser than them but i really like that's one of the reasons i like monster hunters and pistol arrows is you can run around it has to be equal to or lesser than so uh like two pistol arrows running along can just up or L to each other and they can be fast. Yep. So all of a sudden you're getting like seven AP out of eight stone. Right now, if something breathes on them, they're dead. <laughs> they're, they're dead. Right. I'm not like, you know, they're, they're tissue paper wrapped in nothing like a little bit of water. So they're even weaker tissue paper. Um, but I, I really like family. A family's a great keyword it's a lot of fun it's a lot of flavor um too like a lot of their characters have names right this like the various members of the family yeah um like frank uh is really is really strong combat guy he's um he's a swordsman but he has a good two four five pistol he he's a big thing that a lot of people like and is um some of the guild chat people have been playing some more family they've been really praising frank um i'm not a big frank guy but um I can see his value. I can see his use. It's just the way I've been, or the pools and and uh, deployments I've been playing family in at least so far. I've not been playing him. I've been playing um I've been playing them with a couple of versatile models because I've been trying to um, feel out the versatile models in guild. Like I like these keeper out of keyword. A yeah. lot of guild people don't. Um, like, cause like, well, that's not as good as Arcanist Peacekeeper. It's not as good as Hoffman Peacekeeper. I'm like, that, yes, you are not putting more AP and stones into it. Like, but busting out an armor two good. model out of nowhere is really good. You know, if something needs to just stand there in the middle while, uh, Perdita shoots it to buy you some space. Like, I think it's good. And it's one of the only armor pierces. I like the Peacekeeper. I like it's gun, as I said about earlier. So I haven't been using Frank as much. Um, because only Perdita can op or L into him, right? So it's yeah. So he's not getting the AP efficiency, but he has flurry. He's a stat seven sword. Like, I mean, the, the man can do some work. And and certainly, if you wanted to play with Frank, I don't think you're wrong. I I definitely think that you need, like you said, hand discipline would be a big thing with them and other people as well. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, just me straight up. Sometimes I'm just sitting there looking at an attack and I'm like, man, I really want this to go off. I'm no, I'm holding this for a different situation, but <laughs> screw it. I'm going to slam it down. Oh, the bloodthirst gets you. Yeah. I'm true. just like, no, this, this is hitting. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I get, I did that the other day with guard. I, I used a card that I shouldn't have used to try to hit something. But um, the other thing that I get is uh, the bad money chasing good. So you spoke to Jeremy for the Arcanist. He's the next poker player. Like he was saying, yeah. and, uh, we were talking about like he definitely sometimes I definitely chase chase good money with bad. I'm just like, well, that missed. I should tr like now I should flip this card and try another AP. Like no, like he lost. It sucks. Got it. Like <laughs> score the yeah, points. Move on. Yeah, move on. <laughs> score the points. Uh, any of the so I will say I do. Another reason I like the family is because I've been playing Ophelia for Bayou, mm -hmm. and it's just a mirror just faction. They just do a lot of the same things and obviously same types of models. But are there any other family? Uh, models you want to kind of like shout out that you just kind of like playing with yeah uh and so nino is like i said a, a huge piece he he's paper right so i mean like lots of things but um he has uh deploy after deployment uh, from the shadows and you have to be careful with him you, you can't put him out too too forward but he just he's making he's making you money because he's giving you a lot of ap uh, the other thing that i think is really good um is pistol arrows and monster hunters. So pistol layers are just cheap AP, very cheap AP, but lots of AP. But monster hunters are really good. Um, they've got they've got deadly pursuit, which is a big thing. So any kind of extra movement guild doesn't have a ton of extra movement. So any kind of extra movement tricks 
come in, come in hot. I'm not a Santiago fan, so I'll, I'll speak against family member. Um, Santiago, I don't get, so that could be just me, but his, his role for eight stones is, is still a mystery to me. Well, going on to our last keyword that we have, we have the witch hunter keyword. And here's, I have not seen Sonia played as a master, but I have seen her brought in as a secondary master. And I was playing a bubble crew and she burned the crap out of it. And that, that left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. She can definitely do that. I think, um, so Sonia is one of those keywords that I think is kind of generally reviled or not reviled, but just, um, man, that doesn't do, that's not good enough. Um, and I think it's one of the keywords that changed function pretty significantly from the second to 30. So I've been playing a fair amount of witch hunters cause I have a little bit of snowflake, uh, a lot of bit of snowflake syndrome. And, yeah. uh, and I think, I think they're actually pretty good. Um, it might be a uh, shout out to swamp fiends. It might be one of Cody's like, this is good against newer players or, you know, middle tier players, but against good players, it won't work. I don't know. But Sonia herself, um, I will speak to two things that I think get overlooked. Everyone remembers the blast. Everyone's like, oh man, Sonia blew me apart with blast. And this, she can certainly do that. But Triple her keyword blast. doesn't, <laughs> yeah, right. But her keyword doesn't have card draw. So as a dependable plan, having two severes, one to hit and one to put down the max damage, not great. Um, just because it's not dependable, right? When you get it, do it, right? <laughs> Blow their face off. I'm not trying to say that it's not a great ability. But the two things I think she gets underrated for is um, she has summons. She has a summon ability, which is pretty big because her, her dudes are pretty squishy. They're meant to be fire and forget missiles. Um, yep. So resummoning them, resummoning them is pretty, pretty important to her game plan, like very important to her game plan. And the other thing that she has that can be super good that you have to that you need to maximize when you play her is smothering flame, which is if this model is a cruise leader, uh, enemy models within line of sight, reduce the range of their non melee actions by an amount equal to the value of their burning condition. Oh, so you want to leap all of a sudden your leap is only three inches. You have a six inch, um, you know, you have a six inch bubble of a, of a dispel magic or something, you know, you've got, um, your Oni and you can summon from whatever eight or eight, not 10 inches or eight inches away. I think it is right. All of a sudden that's five inches, right? All of a sudden your uh, Tengu who's trying to command someone to drop it and interact is less. All of a sudden your guns, your 12 inch guns are only nine inches, right? Um, it's a really big ability. And a lot of that, and you put a lot of stress on your opponent's thinking by changing their positioning requirements. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's big, too, just because there's not a range to that. So it's just, hey, that's there, and that's just something that happens. Yeah, if she can see you, she gets it. Oh, so um, you do have to have sight. I have Just line of sight, though. So yeah. you can block it with, like, forests and things. But one of the other things of her strength of her keywords are... Um, there's a lot of speed, so she has a witch hunter, witchling handler, which adds plus two movement to witchlings or witchling minions. So stalkers or beaters suddenly become speed five. Um, the witchling stalker has unimpeded and suddenly is speed seven. The hand, the uh, sorry, the the big boys, the punchers, the witchling thralls go to speed seven as well. So suddenly you got a speed seven guy who blows up if you kill him. So, you know, he walks seven, charges seven. So he's 14 inches up, uh, swinging with a sword, 15 inches away, maybe hits you, right? And then you kill him, then you take a damage and a burning. Um, so she's pretty fast. Her totem is incorporeal and can and walk 15 inches. So that's pretty fast and can get through a lot of so stuff. That is kind of a cool summoning mechanic, though, because you have to be on fire and then she takes the fire to create these things. So it's kind of an interesting mechanic. Yeah. And, and it's really good. One of the hidden things about it is it's a set amount of damage. So you're hard to wound. You, you cool. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's still five damage. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you, it's a willpower attack. Oh, you put me on an egg, still five damage, you know? Oh, you're a, you're a stone user. Right, you have four health. Okay, well, I, I did five damage to you. You can't stone to reduce the amount of damage. I mean, you can stone to reduce the amount of damage, but you can't put me on a negative. So you've got a thirty-three percent chance, depending on what's in your hand and what's been flipped, that you're still dying. Right? It's yeah. um, 
it's a really key mechanic of her and, and it's really and there's a lot of incidental fire like her henchmen just light you on fire by shooting you uh all of her witchlings demise does some damage and lights you on fire all of her blasts lights you on fire there's a lot of blaze trigger um, which is a light you on fire so there, there's a bunch of ways to put fire out onto people so yeah. it's 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 pretty big i think to get at least one of those a game if you can get to great but um like you need her stuff is shocking squishy so you'll need to replace the casualties okay so what in her so you're talking about some of the stuff that's like you know useful um i mean in the story, at least, you know, Samuel Hopkins is like a big part of the story. Do you see him on the board a lot or no? Um, so I've used Sam, I think every game I've played with Witch Hunters so far. And when I played against Witch Hunters, he was there as well. Um, he gets three shots. He has um, rapid fire, so he can discard a card and take a shot. He's unimpeded, speed six. All very good. He has ricochet, um, so he can like shoot a guy and hurt another guy, and both of them get fire one. So he comes in a bunch. Um, I think unimpeded is one of the most underrated rules in the game because people, yeah. when they're discussing cards, don't ever think about the board. And when there's forests and you know bogs and whatever else you're calling, um, you know, severe, like they just don't think about that. And I think it's really important in a game that has scoring in certain locations and, you know, different pools having severe is really important. So I, I, I take Sam a lot cause he's another place to put out fire. Sonya wants fire on their things because then she ignores concealment and cover. So all of a sudden the I'm using terrain to my benefit, but I keep a line of sight goes away. Right. Um, yeah. So Sam comes in a lot. I, I use Sam okay. a lot. I think he's, I think he's good. I know he was thought of as poor originally. Once again, very squish just dies. I mean, he has arcane. <laughs> he has arcane shield and counterspell, like all the keyword or most of the keyword, but that's not. So there's like um, there's some subtle hand discard management. So that's like part of the guild's themes is control. They control your hand. There's a lot of stagger. They control your movement. Um, but he does a lot of that. He just lights stuff on fire and shoots it. Um, I also want to. Sam's another good example of a guild thing that I think is part of the guild theme. His tactical action is creep along, which is push the model up to its movement towards a friendly model. That's very similar to a lot of guild things. Guild doesn't have a ton of leap, which is like an independent guy doing independent things, being yeah. there, like jumping through the air. They have a lot of like move towards your buddy, move your other friend towards your buddy, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of like, we're a team because we're just humans trying to make beat the monsters. And so, <laughs> um, which is why it comes back to guilds of fundamentals thing, because you can't just like, I leap six inches. I think you're right there because I think the more I analyze different games and different keywords and stuff, the more that I notice that when, when you have more criteria for something to happen in this game, you need to be more, you need to have more foresight and you need to have more control over what your plan is mm -hmm. because that's less mistakes that you can make because you have to be tight. You have to have stuff where it's supposed to be. Right. You don't have um, a spider swarm that is like, well, I, I mispositioned by a little bit. I guess I'll just use my bonus action to walk five inches. That's fine. You know, I'm going to just luck sack through this and, and flip a card and hope, right? Like you do flip a card and hope. That's that's the game. But yeah, um, that's one of the things I, I definitely love about Bayou is looking at Bayou. There's so much just like out of activation movement and so much just pushes out of here and there where I'm just, there's not many times where I can't somehow manufacture extra movement pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's still a lot of ways to do it in guild. It's just not, it's not, not as, as easy. clean. Yeah. It's just not as easy. <laughs> yeah. You, you have, you can't accidentally stumble on it. It seems with guild, it seems like you have to know where it is and you need to have it in your pocket ready for that right moment. Yeah. It certainly helps. I mean, there's plenty of times when I've, um, dirtled an activation and as I'm getting better at realizing my flaws in, in game and, and out of game, you know, analyzing my games later, you're like, that was a wasted activation, right? Like I, yep. I spent an AP just like standing there staring at nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't use this bonus action to move a thing because I had it in the wrong place or I didn't have the anchor to, you know, push towards or that kind of thing. So it's, um, I definitely think it's like a plan. It, it will help you build your plan ahead skills. 
Yeah, and I think as especially if you're a newer player listening to this, I will say that just kind of don't get discouraged by those wasted activations because there's just a lot of times where you're going to go, oh, I want to hit this thing. And you go to hit it and you flip the black joker. And I'm like, well, crap, I'll just attack again. They're like, wait, I got butterfly jump. I'm going to jump away from you. And then you're just standing there. And that whole activation is wasted. And you just, you can't get discouraged from that. Just remember and burn that into your brain with salt that I now hate this model and I'm going to kill it some other way next time. Right. You'll learn <laughs> Um, every game you walk away from where you hit something new, you're like the appropriate response, which is not always my response historically, but I'm getting better at, um, <laughs> is how do, what are my solutions to this? How can I walk in with a plan for something with butterfly jump? Right. So not just like, well, but my, my turbo nerd executioner just ran up and swung at it. And now he just leapt away or I so, flipped a five, five on my played, plus flip. You've played Curious and Arcanist before, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my buddy brought uh, Iggy to the party mm -hmm. and, and I dove in with, you know, um, I think it was a young Nephilim, but I, I dove in with a Nephilim on one of his models and I got fire. It was probably, it was probably curious. And then he's like, cool, you're within six. I'm going to push you two inches away. And I'm like, great, fantastic. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is swell. That's <laughs> exactly what I had planned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah don't get discouraged folks it, it's no. part of the game yeah and you'll learn and like yeah you just, just have to take it and, and move on learn, and yeah i mean you know you can curse like it's it's fine but it, it does get better also the other thing that i would keep in mind that i am trying to learn to do better is the one decision feels terrible in the moment right you're like you have what but i had planned this all out and that's the worst but like it's not how you score points in this game right there's yeah like you can recover from a from a bad decision from a bad flip often, right? Like there's plenty of players that are much better than me that would black joke or something stupid. Like it's playing Ray of, of third floor wars fame. And he was trying to hit my ice golem with a willpower attack. And I somehow beat him on this attack. I don't know, like six times, like something <laughs> ridiculous. Like he should have pushed my ice golem out of the way. So he could score a claim jump. He could not do it for, he just couldn't like God's God's will was his ice goal and was not moving. Um, he still found a way to win, right? Cause he, cause he could obey with huggy, a silent one who then arced yeah. through an ice pillar that made my guy slow. That was going to score the corrupted idol. You know, like it was like, there's, there is ways, right? You, it's easy to get discouraged. I do it all the time. I, yeah, I would you, recommend getting you gotta really, you got to really stop beating your head against the wall. And I, I had this game against Tony where I was playing whiz bang and Tony's bringing stuff in. I'm throwing a couple of things in there and, and my stuff's dying. And I'm like, why am I fighting this battle here? Why don't I go do my schemes, get my points that way? And I ended up winning the game because I just gave up the fight right. and just went to go get points. How many games do you figure you've um, wanted to give up about something that was felt terrible and then you win the game? Like, I figure it's probably a third maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I was going to say probably close. I mean, I was thinking close to when I finally make that, as long as it's early in the game. Now, if it's late, usually you've already made yeah. that bed. Right. Yeah. But early on, like I feel if I make that decision turn two, I feel like I win probably about 50% of those games. Yeah. You can pivot pretty hard and a five turn game, like the first two turns feel to like, I mean, the other day, Saturday night when I rage quit, like we didn't even get through two turns. I know that was the wrong on, on the light of day when I'm awake and not tired, like that was the wrong decision. I, there was still a game to play, yeah. but um, the five <laughs> turns is a long term time, right? Like yeah. you, you've not even played, you played less than 75% of the total game. You, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of time for that error to not snowball, to like come yep. back around to, to get better. Yeah. So we've talked about the keywords, but one thing I do want to hit up real quick before we just talk general guild for a little close out here is what about these versatile models? What are some of the good ones, some of the ones you would recommend maybe people picking up because they do a lot of work for you? Yeah, so um, I'll tell you what my opinion is second, and I'll tell you what the general guild opinion is first because I think that'll probably sure. carry more weight. Um, guild Stewart is loved, fond upon, um, brought in many, many lists. Some people feel it's auto clued. The big things he gives you is he gives you a heal, um, and a focus he can give you card draw off the enemy's dropping schemes um, so things like nelly things like guard um, that are making the other guy possibly drop schemes 
um, or guard where they have to drop their enemy schemes, right? He's can make he's making cards. He's card draw. Um, yeah. He also ends conditions and can add more focus. So he is a place to find focus for some of your bigger bigger beaters. Many of your masters and some of your henchmen are pretty big beaters. Uh, I think that's can be too much. Like I said earlier, I'm a business guy. Like, and guild stores sometimes can feel like too much effort on the for the gain. But a lot of people love him. A lot of people, the focus can go a long way. On like Sonia, where she wants to, you know, maybe your plan is to try to land all these big blasts, or Lady J with a great sword. Focus goes a long way. Um, yeah. The other big thing about him is if you kill him, if the enemy kills them, they get a four, six, eight damage flip, which is cheatable as long as it's not on a negative. So. Yeah. Um, you know, you just killed my six stone model with your enforcer beater and I cheated my severe and he takes eight damage back. Um, seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah, seems fine. Uh, so Stuart's a big one. Um, I do like Stuart. I, I know I, it sounded nice saying, but I think he has a lot of use if you need the condition removal. He's, he is very good. I just don't think he's an every list guy. Yeah. Um, the emissary doesn't get a lot of love outside of Marshall because Marshall has Domidors that can obey him so they can make him get more attacks. He is a control piece to me. He can slow. He's got a two-inch sword. One of the things that you'll learn as a new player is that two-inch reach is relatively rare and it can be really well used. So if yep. you stay, if you get to two-inch reach but out of their one-inch reach, you're hurting their AP efficiency because they can't charge. Which so they have really... to walk for one AP, then attack you for one AP. And he has a way to give them slow. So that's, he can be a very good control piece. He's got a great sword, so he can be a bit of a beater. Um, I like the Peacekeeper. is one of the ones that I'd call out, as I said earlier. I think his gun is really good and underrated. Um, he also could just punch things. He's another, he's slow. So you have to bring something to mitigate the slowness. Some yeah. kind of push mechanism some way to like the printing press maybe even burning pushing four inches something like that that's the big versatiles that i can think of oh dr grimwell is the other big one he's part of the asylum keyword which might someday become a real keyword he can be a mix of beater and control hand control he has a lot of he has stagger a lot of discard mechanic to him the big thing is his bonus action is a f move like a move for anything without a flip. So cards, yeah. uh, things that don't require flips are really good because then you can't black joker it. It doesn't drain your hand. If you need a six, which is about a third of a chance to fail. Like you, when I first started, I looked at a six, I'm like a six TN. That's all I need. Got it every time. But it, that's not mathematically true. It's like a third of a chance to fail. Um, yeah. So he's really good. So those are the big ones. I would say Grimwell, Stewart, oh, oh, the rider, the pale rider is the other big guy. Pale rider is really, really good. Um, he his gun is amazing. It's a two four five gun, which is fine enough damage track. But the big thing is it staggers, which turns on a lot of things in guild. Which stagger is slows down your movement. And there's like movement <laughs> duels and like Grimwell, for instance, all of a sudden gets a free crow if you you're staggered. That, you get that injured on him too. But the injured is the is the big thing. He also has one of his pulses um, of his bonus action is to do two irreducible damage and burning. So irreducible damage is really good because it gets around armor, it gets around hard to wound, it gets around soul stone use, right? It's irreducible is really strong, especially in a big pulse. So the yep. rider, and he's plus he's quick and unimpeded, right? Speed seven has ride with me. And yep. in a and in a faction with low mobility or at least challenging mobility, in a lot of cases, he his mobility and his injured really good. Yeah, even the riders that aren't as good as some of the top tier ones, they still have a lot of playability just because, like you said, the speed, the ride with me, and then just a lot of their abilities just make them worth bringing in some situations where you just need that extra movement and speed. So, yeah, that was a really cool model that I was looking at, too. Yeah, he's really good. I mean, he, he was one of the models that got nerfed in the move to GG1 because his his um, blow up his revel in conflict was like ludicrous. It was like two, three, four irreducible plus burning plus slow. I think in a six inch, you know, aura around him or pulse around him. And now his major one is everything. Every friendly gets to make a charge or a melee action um, in that area. So he, he's really good. Like for me, the big thing is the mobility and the injured gun, but yeah. the pulse also very good. Yeah, injured at range is super good. I've been, I've been digging that with. Uh, 
I've been bringing a lot of Sammy for uh, for Bayou, and she does the same thing. We're just putting out injured at range and making you discard cards. People hate it. Right. And in the Marshall recommendation, he's undead, so the Domodors can obey him, so you can take more shots with that great gun. So he's really good that way. And like injured turns on like all your rat four and not there's not rat in this game all your stat four or five <laughs> guys or like your stat six guys all of a sudden are seven eight you know six seven eights nines all of a sudden your tens are hitting your tens are beating their thirteens right like yep. it's it gets pretty good or um you know you have a ten or eleven and just all of a sudden that's an eighteen so they need to get to a twelve a thirteen to even put you on an egg and so you know their stat you know, that means an eight. That means a high moderate, you know, so all of a sudden the mat, the dice math or the card math gets favorable. Yeah. So looking at the guild faction, what we'll start off with, what are your top three masters? And this doesn't mean the most powerful, but what are three masters that you really enjoy bringing and you've had some good success with? Um, so for me, I am still on the straightforward master. So I like family a lot would be on my top three. I would say Marshall is up there and I've really been enjoying uh, witch hunter because I, I enjoy that aggressive play style. Like they're, they're meant to be aggressive. One of the things I meant to say about guild um, just to get a feel for what keywords, especially as starting out, go to the weird website, check out the masters. There's a little blurb of like gameplay and lore and that gameplay tells you what they designed the crew to do. And I think one of the major failures that people can make, or at least I made is like, you just like put together this arcane combo or just pick random models. Cause it's a model and don't have a strategy to start. And so yeah. if you just use the, I'll say default strategy of the, of the stated keyword design and just kind of plan to play it that way. I think that's a good start. I mean, you know, there's yeah. still, you need to make variations. You need to learn opponents. Like there's still a long way to go, but at least coming with a plan as opposed to just like, I have these five models, they do things, yay! Having like, okay, I want to play these models like this. Talking with some game designers and just people in the industry, it, when they design the game to work a certain way, if you don't follow that guideline, you are you tend to, if you don't know what you're doing, making the work harder for yourself. You're, you're making it harder to play, you know, the toy that they designed for you to play a certain way. Yeah, exactly. And, and things have... The one of the good things about Malfoy is the models have a lot of depth in a way that some other games don't have, right? Like yeah. an individual trooper doesn't have a lot of depth in War Machine. Um, but there's a lot of options. You can you can play them mixed ways. But I, I found a lot of my recent success has been so you have the scheme pool, scheme strat, and and deployment, and like having a sound strategic goal, or at least a strategic goal at all. Even if it's a crap strategic goal, at least you have a strategic goal of how you want to play this pool and then build towards that. So then your models have roles, they have things they're trying to do. And so they're not just dirtling nearly as yeah. much, right? Sometimes the strategic plan was bad or it didn't match. But like if you at least have a strategic plan. You can, you can, you know, did my build match that? Did I play around it? You know, the, but there's at least a started goal, stated goal, other than like, I want to play and I want to score points. You're like, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and I, for witch hunters, for me, I, I enjoy that like aggressive, like I'm going to play. These dudes are going to like jump in your face and do a little bit of damage. They're, go ahead and murder me. Like, yeah. like I'm buying space for Sonya. I'm buying space for Sam to shoot you. Um, they're doing damage. Like I enjoy that. And then when you get to me, I'm going to make new ones. Right. Yeah. When you, um, when you look at the guild, which we kind of touched on it a little bit, but if you had to pick one or two masters just to say for a new player, like, Hey, this is a great starting spot. And, you know, maybe the models are already in the third edition boxes. Maybe they're, it's easy to play or at least start with the, with that keyword, which keyword would you recommend? Um, so if you've never played miniature games, I would 100% recommend Marshalls. Um, Marshalls look cool. Um, they have a lot of forgiveness. They heal a lot. They've got defensive tech. Everything has a gun just about. So you miss position, they can still shoot, right? There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of good things there to start with. The other one that I would recommend is either augmented um, because once again, they've got, um, they've got a, they've got interesting activation order and positioning challenges, but I also like think family will teach you good 
Um, if you can, if you can dig in and deal with the losses and learn, I think family is a great learning keyword. It, if you will get burnt out and like you're not ready for the long haul of, of coming up the curve, martial or augmented, they will give you more um, forgiving wins, right? Like they will give you more. They'll either give you like everyone likes to win, right? Like losing over and over and over again sucks for everyone. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. So I would say martial and augment are probably the best. And if you're already know miniature games a little bit and understand positioning, I would recommend family. Yeah. And the more I look at guilds, the more I'm thinking like if you're a new player to Malifaux and especially if you maybe don't have a ton of tabletop experience, I'm, I'm starting to lean towards guild maybe being a great starting point because we've looked at all the keywords and we see how, you know, much fun you can have with the basic strats of say, you know, Sonya or the basic strats of the family. And then as you grow in the game, there's a lot of growth and ceiling that you can reach for when you get to people like Lucius and when you get to people like the guard and other keywords like that. So it, it's really a good starting faction for a lot of people to get into this game with. Yeah, I, I think it does have a lot to offer, although I think a lot of the factions can um, have, I, I think there's a lot of breath in each faction. Scale well. Yeah, I think, you know, like I wouldn't start with Mama Z, regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't start <laughs> with Sui. Like the pigs are super cool, but there's a lot of moving parts there, right? Like maybe you want to start with the Kin or, or, um, Ma's crew, uh, Trixie, right? Yeah, like you don't start crew. with Big Hat, right? <laughs> like <laughs> you scale into Big Hat. Uh, you don't you don't start with Sandeep, right? <laughs> That's too many moving parts. You don't start with Rasputina. She's control yep. is a not a skill that you know when you start. You start with a Karis. You start with the augmented, right? Well, you gotta have knowledge to control. Yeah, exactly. And and control is like a patience game. And and most time when you're starting out, you're like, you know, the the first couple turns of patience and setting up things is not. Not what you would generally want to do. Not what I want to do when I started. I'm like, okay, I'm playing this game. Let's murder some stuff. Dude, <laughs> you, you don't got to tell me about it. Like that was the, that's one of the hardest things when you're starting out where you you just want to, especially if you're coming from like War Machine, like you and I have played before, where you're just like, I just want to punch this in the face. And then they're like, cool, but you're not scoring any points. And you're like, what? Yeah. That was one of the, one of the hardest lessons I had to learn is attrition is God. Right? In War Machine, attrition is, is the rule. Like if you get behind on attrition, you lose just flat out. Like you might lose by scenario. You might win on clock if they attrition you slow enough, but like, and recursion and recursion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like attrition is king. So I'd be like, Oh, I'm down. They killed my model. I lost because I only have five models or six, whatever, eight models. They killed two of my models. I lost like the the snowball started. I can't possibly come back from that. Not correct. And I don't know about guild. uh, I don't know about guild ball. um, But since I was made by War Machine players, I assume that it's got a similar attrition. Yeah, it's very, very similar. You know, once the attrition ball starts. And, like, attrition certainly hurts you. I'm not trying to naysay attrition as, like, a... Well, well, with Guild Ball, it was once you were down on activations because the models don't come back till the next turn. So you get away from a little bit of that War Machine feel bad. But once you're down, like, one or two activations, the turn gets really out of control. Yeah. Uh, and you can so and there's definitely there's stories when i was first starting about especially two e where like i have no models left but i scored all my points and you spent all your time murdering my models so i win yeah but guild is guild is a good faction i think guild i've really been enjoying my diving into guild and, and learning about it especially having played arcanist first it lets it's interesting playing different things like for instance guild has guns everywhere guild like lots and lots of guns arcanist don't you know what i mean so like and i played circle and more and more machine so like Pred anomaly so guns are amazing <laughs> like they, they are completely yeah. underrated in guild like but it's only stat five i can't make sure it hits like yes one of them are gonna hit yeah you have 12 <laughs> like or not you have like you know <laughs> seven shots eight shots whatever but you have two yeah. of each right like yes i i get what you're saying but there's only so many severes in the deck and there's only so many severes in their hand you, you know what i mean like yeah so guild one of the things is the rate of fire yeah, and I was going to ask you, so why does Guild get such a bad rep in the community? Because I've talked with a lot of Guild players who, you know, they say there's a lot of playability and you can do really well. So why, what do you think are some of the holdups or mythos out there about them? Um, I think there's a couple things that are driving that thought. One is um, their movement abilities aren't as error prone, right? Like we were talking about. You don't have leap. You have consolidate power. Right, so I have to have planned ahead, which means more mistakes, which 
uh, tabletop games or war games, everyone makes mistakes. Even the best players make mistakes. Um, so having a easier button on fixing mistakes gives you more more recovery from a mistake from a failure. Um, so that's yeah. a real weakness. I, I think that's a real weakness. Um, two, I think the guild players have trapped themselves into an all-star mentality. So I don't know how many how many internet discussions I've seen that are. I play these same five models in every crew. I always lose. Guild's bad. Um, <laughs> I mean, guild might be bad. I, I don't think so, but like you're doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> you know, like, like poor, like, and it's not working. So it's, you know, or like I saw an argument, and that happens a lot on the internet. I saw an argument about Marcus being bad. A guy said Marcus was bad, but he didn't use adaptive evolution. Like you're not using the main that's, keyword that's ability. Like, thing. <laughs> like, like, like Marcus might be bad, but I, I mean, I don't think so. I think Marcus is really good, but but if you're not using the keyword ability at all, then you know that doesn't count. So I think that's a big problem. I think they. There's a lack of a lot of lack of growth mindset. Yeah, and I think that's a little bit of hangover of Seki Sekini. There's a lot of um things work this way, like you know, and, the, and then they don't. The third thing I think that happens is people get a lot of guild has the opportunity to make super super machines, right? Like Lucius. And they have like this people kind of walking with like, I want to make this super machine and I'm going to hit every six and I have a thousand thirteens like Sonya. Like one of my problems with, I think the way Sonya is played is people see her as this blast bot. And that's certainly one of her strengths. I'm not trying to naysay that, but like you don't have a clutch full of three severes or sometimes, right? There's, there's not a lot of card draw there. So how yeah. are you hitting, hitting those three? How are you getting the severe consistently? You know what I mean? How, how yeah. are you doing that consistently? And I think, so I think that's a problem. And I, and I think people devalue, I think guild makes their strengths on building, building small wins. So you don't, you don't, you have a bunch of rat fives or a strength five guns that are two, three, five crit strike guns, right? Like that's standard profile. Yeah. You flip enough cards. Those, those matter, right? Like th- those, those build up, you know, I do two damage. I, you're more of along the lines of saying that you're almost wanting to trade up a lot with the guild instead of, because from what I'm hearing you say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that almost some of the more expensive pieces, maybe they don't, maybe they aren't as a certainty as maybe some of the other higher pieces, but it feels like from what you're saying with just some of the lower stone models, you can sometimes punch up a little bit. Yeah. I, and take those more expensive models and get a good trade off. Yeah, that's my current working philosophy. I believe that the guild design is that they're the everyday man, they're humans, they're basic humans. So they're going to win not through being a monstrosity. They're going to win through I have six dudes shooting a lot of crappy rounds at you. It's kind of like an Imperial Guard mindset or a Yeah, it's interesting. Or um, you know, like I'm going to like I each of my dudes individually are tissue. I can have one guy in one place that's eight wounds tissue. I can have two guys at four wounds each in two different places that are tissue. You know, if you're a melee beater, having the two four stone guys in two different places makes it harder for that melee beater to murder me because the melee beater has to get to me positionally. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's, but people don't think like people don't think like that. Maybe, some there are people that have told me on the guild chat that you know those four stone models will die immediately they always die immediately and i'm like i haven't found that maybe that's my competition maybe that's why i'm playing it i don't know maybe i will find that but so far you know from my experience i i think that's the strength of guild is that you know dash dash's summons are subpar in a lot of cases or more challenging to get through but he's got a two four five axe he can focus for a free action you know, he's got a lead line coat built into him. So all of a sudden that dude's standing there wagging your face and with an ax turn three and four doing stuff, right? Like the Lady J's, the Sonya's of the world are like doing stuff, but like, you know, the death marshal, sometimes I have fast, you know, <laughs> like, like that's pretty good. Yeah. Having fast is good. And now I get three, two, three, five shots where I walk, like I was playing against Mei Fang. I walked him into a aura and I killed sparks with 
my first shot because Lady J missed with hers, right? Like, so that cards just came up bad. Like, I should have hit by the numbers because I'm a six versus their five or five versus five or whatever it was. I had to focus. I should have hit by the numbers, but I missed because cards miss sometimes. But I had two more backup shots with this death marshal, right? And the death marshal let me push a little bit because I had death marshal recruiter. And, you know, there was just, it was all these small advantages or what you're building as opposed to like, I'm a spider swarm. I charged from across the entire world and I had a built in onslaught and I got double pluses to my flip and I've murdered three things in this first turn. Right. Like that, that's not. I, that, yeah. I think, uh, I think when you're looking at the way your crew and your, your faction set up, when I see like, I'm looking across the table and I see that, they're going to out damage me if I'm trying to play that game. So you have two options. You can either go with like the Lucius and Nelly build and you can just be like, I'm not going to play that game. You're going to have to play this weird game I'm playing. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to try to, you know, win through your weird attrition of just throwing bodies at them, you probably want to try to figure out how to get as much plink damage in as you can. That way you can whittle down the important pieces of that other crew. So I think that's the way you got to tackle it if you go about right. it. Or don't lose them till turn three, right? AP become more valuable as time goes on. So yep. my, all of the masters are pretty strong, right? So I'm Perdita, let's say. I'm I'm gunning away turns one and two. Hopefully I've eaten your scheme runners, which drops your AP pool. My, my pistol errors are literally hiding at the back of the board. Like they're just standing <laughs> there focusing. With their one AP that they can As focus. you made them out of the tree line to go finally out during turn right, three. Right, exactly. But when they start <laughs> moving, they've got, they're fast. They can oporel into each other. You know, all of a sudden they're sprinting 20 inches down the board. Turn three, right? Like, yeah. um, and then, okay, you have the decision. Are you trying to kill Perdita? You don't kill Perdita, she's going to start gunning off your big guy's face pretty quick, right? Okay, yeah, are you yeah. going to spend your AP to do that? Are you going to spend your AP to score? Are you going to use your AP to hunt down my pistol arrows? Right, and... And you can make those choices, right? But like, then, but turn one, you're like, I'm just going to murder that guy that's standing there because I can murder him turn one and then he's useless. Then that, that those <laughs> stones were used, right? So I think um, I've been finding more success by playing those cheap models back. You have to save them. And and I think Guild yeah. needs that Use AP. That because they can't. They yeah, because I, they can't I've done that with those important models that you don't want to die. You need to keep them alive for stuff, especially your weaker models. Don't make it easy for them to kill them. Use, you know, line of sight blocking terrain. Use your cover and concealment. And a lot of times that's going to be enough to keep your weaker things alive, at least in the turn three and right. four. So it's a small advantage, right? So it, if they do go get them, which they could do, there's a lot of stuff that can go murder thing in this game right like but make the ap hard make them have to flip their use their 10s and 12s to kill this dude that they've had to run all the way across the board now they can't get back to scoring places right like that's the kind of advantage build that i think guild thrives on and other other um factions probably do as well um i just felt in arcanist i could make big swings better because each individual is an individual in arcanist right which fits their fluff. They're supposed to be these rebels that are like going against the grain and, and they should be independent. Right. And the guild is like, we are a team. We are guild, right? <laughs> like we have our, we have our heroes. We have our lady J's and our Sonya's. We have our heroes, but we are guild, right? Like together we will, we will push back the monsters. And so I think you really need to build those, um, build those synergies up to not just like synergy and like rule synergy, but I mean like in positioning in AP growth and in the fundamentals the things that aren't printed on the card, everything has walk, everything can interact. You know, everyone has two AP looking at it. I think that gives a lot of people a good jumping you know point for people interested in guild and people getting into the game. Uh, but something that's cool that we got kind of coming up is we do have a couple of people that we're looking at either doing some streaming or actually some battle report type stuff. Uh, so we are looking at doing that, which, you know, it takes a little bit of time with Malifaux because the one thing I can't stand about some of the Malifaux streams and battle reports with just the length of it. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there needs to be a better job of cutting that down into a more manageable watching space. So that's something I'm definitely interested in working on with uh, Mal- Malifaux Battle Reports in the future. Yeah, I know that there's some other streams and, and you know content creators that are fighting that same fight. And 
um, one thing's um, out of the World Cup that's coming out is like you can watch the first two turns too for even today, even before you get that figured out. You can watch the first two turns and get a lot of good feel out of out of the game, right? So you can get a lot of learning yep. from watching. You know, so there's a there's a Russian player that's playing Gildan. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. That has been showing off, like I said, Fiona Gage and showing this control style. And and he's you can watch the first couple turns and you're like, oh, oh, you're playing yeah, it like cool. that, cool. And then like he's doing well, right? He's playing in um, big stage. He's like ranked two in Russia or whatever he is. So he's he's succeeding with Guild. So you can certainly succeed, but it's you can. You don't. It would be nice if it was a thirty-minute, like, quick watch version sometimes. But yeah, right. You know, can extract out some of that goodness. All right. Well, make sure that you guys are checking out the YouTube channel for Rage Quit Wire. We do have content going up there for lots of different things. We even have uh, video formats of podcasts going up there each week. Also, make sure that if you want to support the podcast directly, make sure that you look at our Patreon page. We are in the process of getting new dice. Just obviously with everything going on, that's taking a lot longer than usual. So thanks for everybody that has signed up to be a patron and is being patient with that. And thank you very much for the support. But before we get out of here, Dave, is there anything you want to plug or say before we wrap this thing up? Uh, the only thing I um, would plug is Third Floor War and Swamp Fiends as, as some other podcasts that I listen to regularly. Swamp Fiends especially, I think, does a good job of talking about underlying principles that you can apply to guild especially as newer players right before you get caught up in all the models rules there's learning the base of the pyramid excellent well some of the things i like that swamp beans does is they kind of talk about just some general just gaming barriers that you have sometimes with yourself Mm -hmm. like i think one of the episodes i just listened to was some mental traps where they were talking about how you know, maybe a bad experience with a model, like you got wrecked by this model, you have now this over dramatized version of how good that model is and, and you overreact to it. Yeah. So just good, good topics they have on that show. Yeah, I really like them. They're, they're good. And their, their discord has been great. I don't know if you have a discord or you're intending to go in the discord world, but you know, just thanks to all those content creators. I enjoy listening to your stuff through my, my busy work day and drives when I get back to having to drive to work. All right, Dave. Well, thanks for coming on, man. It, it's been a blast talking with you. And I mean, until next time, folks, make sure that you guys are flipping cards and flipping tables and we will see y'all next time. <laughs>